Good morning, we hear you well and, and see you well as well. Yes, we do hear you. Hello? Good morning, colleagues in Geneva. Can you hear us? This is uh, the office of Dr. Jarvas Barbosa. Yes, we do hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Okay, we're having some problem with the audio. I'm going to try to fix it. We hear you well. We hear you well. Can you hear me? My we do hear you. Yes, we do hear you well. Thank you. Your Excellency from UN Habitat. We Thank hear you. Well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. Can you hear us now? Yes, we do hear you. We do hear you well. We still cannot hear you. You don't hear no, us? No, it's on Zoom. Yes, sí, Zoom. Disculpe. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for everybody who is joining us. So very welcome to our side event, uh, which is called the Innovating to Scale Up Technical Support with uh, and for the member states to deliver health-related sustainable development goals target. My name is Dr. Svetlana Axelrod, and I'm the director of the Global NCD platform here in HQ in Geneva and joining you virtually. Very, very welcome all our participants who are joining us and I see the numbers are increasing and we are uh, expecting much more participants who will join us for our regular meeting that we have in the margins of the UN General Assembly. So dear excellences and dear honorable ministers, distinguished guests and participants and friends and colleagues, 
Welcome to our eighth annual meeting. As I said, the Friends of the Task Force meeting on the margins of the high level week of the 78th sessions of the UN General Assembly, which is going on right now in New York. And uh, it's uh, the fourth time that we are have this meeting virtually. And we are very happy to have this number of participants who are joining us right now. Very, very welcome. And I want to say that it is a very important meeting for us that it is organized with the government of the India and also the WHO with the support of UN Habitat, OHRG and the Secretariat of the WHO Framework Convention of Tobacco Control. And this meeting that marks that 10 years anniversary of the UN Interagency Task Force on Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases is co-chaired by Dr. Manhush Mandavia, Honorable Union Minister for Health, Family Welfare and Chemicals and Fertilizers in the Government of India. And also uh, by the DG, Dr. Tedros, Adhamon Gabriesus, WHO Director General. So following our opening remarks from His Excellency, the Minister of Health of India and the WHO Director General, we'll have an update of the work and key achievements of the UN Interagency Task Force. And let me remind you that the Secretariat of the UN Interagency Task Force is for the 10 years is placed in the uh, WHO headquarters. And they have done incredible work, which we can present for your attention during our meeting. So before we will conclude, we will announce the winners of their, the 2023 uh, task force. And this award will be delivered by our colleagues from the PAHO WHO region. And uh, later the winners will get this award with the letter from DG and uh, you will can uh, get it and celebrate this uh, very important uh, award. So uh, today uh, we will also expect a number of our colleagues who will join us uh, from New York and from all over the world for our event. Uh, just a couple of uh, reminders that today we also have the interpretation. We have the interpretation into English, Spanish, and Russian. You can find the bottom uh, for the interpretation in the Zoom bar for, and you can choose the language that you wish to listen. So let me stop here in this opening uh, remarks. And I would like to give the floor for His Excellency, Dr. Mansoor uh, Mandave, uh, the Minister of Health of India. Over to you. Namaskar. Dr. Tedros, Director General WHO, Distinguished Delegates, Excellencies, Namaste. I welcome you to this significant annual meeting of the Friends of the United Nations Interagency Task Force on the prevention and control of non-communicable disease and mental health. Non-communicable disease have become a significant global health challenges, causing nearly 74% of all deaths worldwide. With a similar trend observed in India, where it accounts for 63% of all deaths, this epidemic of NCDs has far-reaching consequences for individuals, families, and communities, placing immense pressure on healthcare systems. The socioeconomic impact associated with NCDs undercores the urgent need to prioritize prevention and control measure in the 21st century. 
एक्सलेंसीज और नेशनल हेल्थ पॉलिसी एनविसेज द अटेनमेंट ऑफ द हाइस्ट पॉसिबल लेवल ऑफ हेल्थ एंड वेलबींग फॉर ऑल टू अचीव दिस गोल द स्कीम ऑफ आयुष्मान भारत हैज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस सेंटर्स दैट ऑफर पॉपुलेशन लेवल इंटरवेंशंस for the prevention screening control and management of five common non communicable diseases that hypertension diabetes oral breast and cervical cancer awareness for prevention and control of ncds as well as healthy lifestyles is being carried out in mission mode at all levels of healthcare delivery beyond managing illnesses aishman bharat health and wellness centers have been focusing on wellness ensuring the community well being the wellness initiative starts with regular yoga sessions hokathons cyclothons etc other initiatives like eat right india for taking the right kind of food and fit india for exercise have garnered nationwide movement recently taishman bhav initiative was launched to saturate all healthcare services in every village town to ensure reach to the last mile and enable access to healthcare services to everyone in the society excellencies india has developed a national multi sectoral action plan for prevention and control of common ncds which offers a road map and menu of policy options to guide multi sectoral efforts involving other ministries departments towards attaining the ncd targets to strengthen infrastructure human resources development diagnosis and management of ncd disease the national program for prevention and control of non communicable diseases is being implemented subsequently chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and asthma non alcoholic fatty liver diseases stroke and others are added to it the nf ncd strategy has been revised with a newer focus on 75 million people with hypertension and diabetes on standard care by 2025 primary level information is recorded through national ncd portal at public health facilities for reporting and monitoring individual wise screening and treatment adherence of ncd for every individual a single aishman bharat health account number is being maintained and tracking of every single individual with ncds are done through the national ncd portal additionally the pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana provides health insurance coverage of secondary and tertiary care hospitalization rupees 0.5 million per family per year to over 600 million beneficiaries are provided excellencies collaborative efforts among various stakeholders including the central and state governments healthcare professionals international organizations ngos and community organizations are vital to effectively address the burden of ncds leveraging digital health technologies can improve the reach and efficiency of ncd prevention and management programs 
telemedicine, mobile health applications, and data analytics can enhance patient engagements, improve access to care and facilitate monitoring and evaluation. Excellencies, India assures that it is committed to the cause of prevention and control of NCDs and fully appreciate and acknowledge the global efforts in this area. Now, India is proceeding towards illness to wellness concept with all of government and all of society approach. Given the serious challenge of NCDs, global efforts are required to address the challenge need to be driven by strong and strategic leadership, cost-effective intervention, and multi-sectoral approach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. And it's a really great pleasure to get this support from India. You have highlighted the very important issue that the NCD is the biggest killer. And you have highlighted the, how it is important to engage different sectors and partners to um, beat the NCDs. Really, we are highly appreciate the work that uh, you are supporting globally in the region and also in the work of the WHO. And we know that the, uh, India was hosting G20 summit right a couple of weeks ago, and our director general was participating then. And a very important commitments uh, were taken during this G20 meeting. So, and that's uh, my great pleasure now to provide uh, um, the floor, to give the floor to our Director General, Dr. Tedros, with his uh, remarks to our meeting. This year marks 10 years of the United Nations Interagency Task Force on the Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases. We have much to be proud of. Together, we have worked with political leaders, parliaments, and partners to save lives in more than 40 countries. We have supported more and more countries to prioritize mental health and NCDs in their sustainable development cooperation frameworks. We have supported governments to increase attention, investment and action to prevent and control NCDs and improve mental health. No single agency could have achieved this. Together, we're much more than the sum of our parts. But there is much more to do. We must do more to respond to the ever-increasing challenge of NCDs and mental health conditions. We must do more to meet the demand for technical assistance to drive whole of society action. And we must do more to mobilize the political and financial resources for governments to deliver on their commitments, including through the Health for Life Fund. Now is the time for the task force and its partners to be even bolder, even more innovative, and even more courageous. The world needs us. As the saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Great support from our Director General for our work and for the Trust Fund, which is called uh, the Health for Life Trust Fund. And uh, uh, let me welcome all participants who are joining us right now. We are in our annual meeting of the Friends of the Unit Registered Task Force, which is uh, this year is called the Innovation to Scale Up Technical Support with and for member states to deliver the health-related sustainable development goals target. So it's my great pleasure after these welcome remarks from our co-sponsors and co-organizers, WHO and the India government, to give the floor to my colleague, uh, Dr. Nick Bonatvala, who is joining us 
uh, remotely from New York, from the heart of the UN General Assembly, who will provide us the latest news, how it is going on there, and also uh, continue with our meeting today. Nick, are you here with us? Please join. I am, I am indeed, and thank you very much, Svetlana, and it's really very exciting for you to be joining here from uh, New York. As you can imagine, it's, it, it's hectic and it's busy, it's exciting. There's a lot going on at the moment. I think everyone is relieved that the rain has stopped yesterday and we have a nice sunny day. So um, um, I add my welcome, excellencies, honorable ministers, distinguished colleagues and friends uh, for this meeting. Um, to kick things off, we're going to ask uh, my colleague Alexei Kulikov from the Task Force Secretariat to give a brief update on what's been happening over the last year. He can only scratch at the surface, of course, in the limited time that he has available. I'd just like to remind you there's the question and answer um, panel below. Please put any comments in there along with emails um, if they require responses afterwards, uh, and we'll try and address those as we go through. Through. Uh, just to remind everyone who's not speaking, just to put themselves on mute uh, as well. So, uh, without further ado, um, Alexi, over to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Nick. Uh, excellencies, honourable ministers, uh, distinguished colleagues, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, as colleagues mentioned this week, the U UN General Assembly convenes three uh, high-level meetings on health which is a remarkable and historic opportunity for world leaders to ensure that health is at the highest possible level on the political agenda. The task force continues to play its part in supporting member states to achieve health-related sustainable development goals. The task force with its uh, 45 members, UN agencies, programs, and funds continues to drive forward the four strategic priorities shown on this slide. With the task force now in its 10th year, there are plans to undertake an independent evaluation on its work and impact during the coming year. In keeping with the normal practice, this year's task force report to ECOSOC included a number of recommendations. Those include the need for the task force to further support all countries, especially small island developing states, and promote joint activities by and between United Nations entities work with bilateral, multilateral, and other development partners to mobilize resources for the UN Multi-Partner Trust Fund, Health for Life Fund, led by WHO, UNDP, and UNICEF, and explore opportunities for new and innovative ways of mobilizing resources. Support member states in intensifying the use of digital health technologies for the prevention and control of NCDs and mental health conditions. The task force continues to undertake country missions in order to scale up whole of UN support to countries in their response to NCDs and mental health. In addition, this year, the task force has scaled up action in the area of NCD and human rights under the leadership of Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. And NCDs in urban settings through the leadership of UN Habitat as well as strengthening the ways that agencies work together to support countries align their work on communicable and non-communicable diseases. Under the joint uh, WHO UNDP flagship program, more countries continue to receive support, including NCDs, uh, mental health, physical activity, and road safety investment case missions. Over the last year, task force has provided support to Bangladesh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Georgia, Kyrgyzstan, Jordan, Malaysia, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Tunisia, and Zimbabwe. So the tools are now being developed to support countries implement health taxes and digital health. And we are now seeing evidence that countries that have undertaken investment cases are implementing recommendations, including in the areas of governance, policy, and strategy, as well as strengthening fiscal, regulatory, and legislative measures. Here are some examples of policy changes following investment cases. More examples along with uh, relevant reports are available on the task force web pages. Progress on other joint programs and working groups are described in the ECOSOC report. During the High-level technical meeting on NCDs and mental health held in Barbados this year, the task force secretariat 
convened a side event on a coherent UN system response to support small island developing states. Discussions resulted in recommendations that will help the task force scale up its support for seats in coming years. They are shown on the slide. Or maybe we don't have a slide, so maybe some technical problems. Let's give it a second. We were talking about seats. Must be slides, Simon. Yeah. Thank you. So going further, I want to talk about multi-partner trust fund progress. So the UN multi-partner trust fund to catalyze action on NCDs and mental health, the Health for Life Fund, established by WHO, UNICEF, and UNDP, continues to make progress with funds beginning to come at up. We remain grateful for the leadership from the funds founding strategic partners, Kenya, Thailand, and Uruguay, and the ever greater support from non-state actors. So Optimist International, a women's grassroots organization, is now supporting the UN Joint Action on Cervical Cancer efforts in eliminating the disease in Africa, the region most affected by the disease, through the Health for Life Fund. We continue to strengthen partnerships announced last year, including Unexia, an innovative blockchain initiative for global health, and Aspen Institute, as well as a range of new partnerships. The Health for Life Fund, if we go to the next, the Health for Life Fund is bringing partners together at the country level to harmonize and align action on NCDs and uh, mental health with government policy. Too often, the limited development assistance available to reduce the burden of NCDs and mental health conditions is fragmented. Forging partnerships and promoting innovation are key elements of the work of the task force. We are working ever more closely with, the, <clears throat> for example, with Africa CDC and Gulf Health Council. Further to the call from the ECOSOC for the task force to support member states in scaling up digital health solutions, task force members have intensified their cooperation between themselves and other partners such as Google Health, Dure Technologies, and Unexia. A digital health business case for NCDs and mental health led by WHO and ITU will be launched shortly. Preliminary findings highlight the remarkable cost effectiveness of digital health interventions at the country level. As always, task force annual report, we can go to the last one, uh, <clears throat> annual report to ECOSOC, which describe work in uh, more detail, is available on the task force web pages. And this presentation will also be available on our uh, website. Thank you for your attention. Nick, back to you. Thanks very much, um, Alexi, and I do urge people to look at the um, at the report that uh, uh, is published on the web website to uh, the Economic and Social Council. Thanks very much. Uh, we now are going to move on uh, to um, uh, the addresses from our distinguished keynote speakers, uh, and it gives me great pleasure in the first instance uh, to give the floor to Madam uh, Mamouna Mod Sharif, the Executive Director of UN uh, Habitat. Uh, Madam, the chair is the, the, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nicholas. Thank you. Can you hear me? Very clearly. Yes. Uh, yeah, Dr. Manso Madavia, Honorable Union Minister of Health and Family, Welfare and Chemical and Fertilizer Government of India, Honorable Mr. Almas Isanov, Head of the Department of Political and Economic Research. President of uh, Administration Kazakhstan, Honorable Mr. Humza Yusuf, First Minister of Scotland, my dear colleagues, uh, Dr. Tedros, uh, Dir Director General of uh, World Health Organization, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, colleagues, friends, ladies, and gentlemen. I'm honored to stand before you today uh, to discuss a critical health issue that impacts urban population worldwide. The topic of non-communicable diseases or NCDs holds immense significance in both developed and developing countries and its demand our sustained attention. I'm pleased that this year we celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Interagency Task Force of Non-Communicable Diseases and proud that UN Habitat has been a member since its inception. 
In both developed and developing countries, governments, organizations, and the United Nations recognize the agency of addressing NCDs. The Interagency Task Force on NCDs was established to coordinate the global effort to combat these diseases and has been has made a significant contribution. NCDs such as heart disease, diabetic, cancer, and chronic respiratory diseases are responsible for nearly 71% of all global deaths. That's staggering, staggering 41 million lives lost each year. And these numbers are rising. Moreover, NCDs do not discriminate between based on geography or economic status. So what is the connect, connection between urban setting and NCDs? Urbanization is happening at unprecedented rate. By 2050, it is estimated that 68% of the world population will reside in urban areas. And this rapid urban growth bring with it a myriad of challenges. One, Poorly planned cities can exacerbate NCDs by promoting unhealthy lifestyle. Second, congested streets discourage physical activity and limited access to green spaces and recreational areas hinders wellness. Third, additionally, pollution and unhealthy food environments in urban settings can contribute to NCD risk factor. Delivery of effective NCDs policy and program needs us to foster effective collaboration between all stakeholders, particularly the national and local government, civil society, and private sector. We must work together to promote healthy living and reduce NCD risk factors. Mayors and local leaders are key to this in this respect, and they have the power to unlock the potential of communities and raise awareness about the link between urbanization, urban planning, and NCDs through education and advocacy campaign. One of the challenges is that the availability of spatially disaggregated data. Local authorities are best placed to facilitate data collection and analyze to better understand the specific challenges faced by cities and tailor interventions accordingly. This is an area where innovation truly comes into play. For example, community health mapping can empower communities to become active participants in mapping their own health. Smartphone apps and GPS technology can help residents document areas with poor air quality, limited access to healthy food and or unsafe sidewalks. This crowdsourced data can inform urban planners and policymakers. Second, participatory budgeting can involve local residents in budgeting decisions related to health infrastructure and urban planning. Communities can prioritize projects that promote physical activity, access to healthcare, and green spaces through direct input in the budgeting process. By incorporating these innovative approaches, urban planners can work together with communities to rethink existing urban spaces and plan those yet to be built. This is not only empower residents, but also ensures that urban planning efforts are more responsive to the unique health challenges faced by different communities. UN Habitat has a unique mandate to promote sustainable urbanization and housing. To address NCDs, UN Habitat is championing the promotion of healthy urban design by encouraging cities to adopt urban planning practices that prioritize health. One particular example I would like to share is the Young Game Changer Initiative, which aims to improve the health and well-being of the young people in intermediary cities. We are implementing this in partnership of World Health Organization in Colombia, India, and Senegal. Earlier this year, we organized a special session on NCDs at the United Nations Assembly last June, where we also launched a UN Habitat Agency brief on NCDs. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, although the road ahead is challenging, we must remember to grab opportunities. I have mentioned already that close to 70% of the world will live in urban space by 2050. However, a large proportion of these urban areas have yet to be built. 
Herein lies a great opportunity for us to influence the urbanization process. I'm sure you will agree that urban health needs to be given top priority. We need a renewed push to promote a preventive approach to health rather than, rather than treating these preventable diseases when that appear. Together, we must embrace the opportunity to create cities that not only provide economic opportunities, but also prioritize the health and happiness of the resident. By doing so, we can work together a healthier, more sustainable and equitable urban future. Let us build a city that is cleaner, greener, safer, and end of the day, have healthier and happier people living in it. Dear friends, colleagues, thank you for your attention. I'm, I hope that I can join you throughout the end, but I have another event which I have to run to. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Back to you, Nicholas. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Madam Executive uh, Director. Um, I found those remarks very inspiring and important. Uh, and it's probably worth me highlighting that this video uh, will be available for people to listen to uh, and to really um, uh, get the benefit from uh, all the speakers that we've got. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's just it's, it's it's a great example of one of the agencies of the task force um, uh, really stepping up and moving forward on the NCD and mental health agenda. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move over uh, to hear from the uh, First Minister of Scotland, um, Humza Yousaf, and we're delighted that he's with us uh, today. Uh, so if uh, we can have um, uh, the First Minister. Dr. Gabriusus, ministers and distinguished guests, it's a real honour to join you at this gathering. I'm grateful to the World Health Organisation and to friends in India for organising what should be a very important event at a very important time. The world is now seven years away from the 2030 deadline, set for achieving sustainable development goals, which of course the United Nations agreed to in 2015. Sustainable Development Target 3.4 recognises that reducing non-communicable diseases or NCDs and promoting good mental health is one of the key health challenges facing the world today. That's true in the Global North, certainly in Scotland, poor mental health and NCDs inflict a greater toll than any government can or should be comfortable with. And it's also very clearly true in the Global South. It's been estimated that non-communicable diseases account for around a third, one third of the disease burden in low income countries. Yet efforts to achieve Target 3.4 are currently being hindered by lack of finance. NCDs only receive 2% of the development assistance for the health sector, which is currently provided by major donor countries. Scotland wants to help redress that balance. That's why tackling NCDs is an integral part of our investment in our partner countries of Malawi, Rwanda and Zambia. For example, we've invested in clinical research laboratories in Malawi and Zambia. These labs, they're already providing a platform for joint research, which is being carried out by Africans for Africa into the causes and impacts of NCDs there. Scotland also very warmly welcomes the establishment of the Health for Life Fund, which aims to mobilise and invest $250 million over the next five years. And I'm delighted to confirm today that Scotland will contribute to that goal by supporting the fund with up to £2.5 million over the next five years. The fund will support collaboration led by the Global South, which supports low and middle income countries to prevent and manage mental health conditions and NCDs. It will focus overdue attention upon a major global health challenge. And crucially, by promoting the leadership of countries in the Global South, it will encourage solutions that are better adapted to those countries' health needs and priorities. The funding that I've confirmed today makes Scotland the first high income country to invest in the Health for Life Fund but I very much hope that we will not be the last. We see the fund as being a welcome step forward in the work of Interagency Task Force on NCDs 
and mental health. And we hope and expect that in the years to come, it will save tens of millions of lives. For those reasons and many more, Scotland is proud to contribute to the fund. And we look forward to supporting its success as we strive together to promote good mental health and to tackle non-communicable diseases. Thank you very much um, indeed, um, uh, First uh, Minister Yousaf. Uh, powerful words highlighting uh, the importance of the NCD agenda, the underinvestment and your generous contribution uh, to the Health for Life Fund and indeed highlighting that uh, Scotland is the first high income country to invest in the fund. Uh, we look forward to working with you uh, uh, and also, as you say, working with you not only in terms of uh, effectively utilising the funds, but uh, importantly, uh, bringing in other high income countries um, uh, in uh, to the fund as well. So thank you very much uh, indeed. I now am delighted to pass over to my colleague, Katerita, Katerina Boeme, who's the Assistant Director General here in WHO, um, leading on external relations and governance. The floor is yours. Uh, Katerina, are you there? I saw your name there earlier, a short while ago. Okay, well, we'll come back to... Um... We see Katarina on the screen, but uh, but uh, Katarina seems to be muted, so we don't hear. Um, doesn't look like she's got a mute against her name. Katarina, doesn't look like you've got a mute against your name. So maybe there's a connection with the microphone or an issue with that. If not, we can come back in just a moment. Um, uh, and I see you nodding there. So let's do that. And let's move over to our next speaker, uh, Nuria Kutneva from uh, Kyrgyzstan. Um, uh, and um, uh, the Economic and Social Council has encouraged the task force and its members to scale up action on NCDs and mental health um, through digital uh, solutions. And so it does give me great pleasure to introduce the Minister of Digitalization for uh, Kyrgyzstan uh, just now. Um, are you there? Yes, Nicholas, I'm here. And uh, thank you for giving me the floor. I hope uh, you hear me. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear the Director General, Dr. Tetras, I would like to express my gratitude uh, to the representatives uh, of the United Nations Interagency Task Force of the Prevention of Non-Communicable Diseases and the Fights Against Them, the Government of India and the WHO for the opportunity to participate in this event. Today, the development of any country is impossible without digitalization. Technologies are advancing rapidly data analysis, artificial intelligence, and much more have become our reality. The Ministry of Digital Development faces the enormous task of creating cross-sectoral solutions, digital platforms for government decisions, and analytics based on existing systems to bring government services closer to every citizen. Intersectoral partnerships are the key to optimizing all solutions. Collaboration with uh, healthcare professionals is especially important since in the healthcare system, data can become outdated every three years. We see that the integration of digital tools and solutions is becoming increasingly common in the healthcare industry. The COVID-19 pandemic has only reinforced the practicality and the viability of the digital healthcare. From telemedicine consultations to wearable devices tracking vital signs, di digitalization in healthcare improves the accessibility, efficiency, and overall outcomes of patient care. It is important for us to know what is being done in the world in this direction 
and what actions need to be taken to achieve sustainable development goals real, related to, to non-communicable diseases and uh, mental health. Last year, Kyrgyzstan received an award for digital healthcare solutions, particularly in the field of tuberculosis. We are interested in information about business cases in digital healthcare and other projects aimed at expanding the use of digital solutions. We do not want to stand still. The Ministry of Healthcare is currently implementing electronic medical records, creating registries, telemedicine uh, platforms, wearable devices, medical applications, and other innovative technologies that improve the delivery and accessibility of healthcare systems. Two ministries, Ministry of Digital Development and uh, Healthcare implemented digital solutions on the basis of national mobile application, which is, which is called Tunduk, which allows citizens to get quick services and dig digital medical documents. We also have digital profile uh, which contains vaccination data, information from labs, a status of insurance, etc. I would like to underline that Kyrgyz Republic at the same time uh, uh, wears, um, puts the great importance on data protection and especially in the sphere of healthcare. In conclusion, we would like uh, uh, to forward the, to the publication of a business case on digital health solutions for the WHO and the International Te Telecommunication Union. And we hope for the support of the task force in developing of our digital health case and uh, technical solutions, technical assistance in the uh, implementation of digital solutions for the prevention and control of non-communicable diseases in Kyrgyzstan. Thank you very much for your attention. Back to you, Nick. Thanks very much indeed. Um, uh, a, a really exciting um, progress uh, that we've just heard about. Thank you very much indeed. Now, some of you will have seen on a chat message that we have um, are having difficulties, and Katarina has been having difficulties in connecting up. She's between two different meetings. Um, and so what she suggested is that it's not going to be able to connect. What I will do is make sure that we do have uh, the uh, uh, the address that she was planning to deliver available and make sure that's uh, put up on the uh, uh, Task Force website alongside this recording so that everyone can have uh, access uh, 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 to it. Um, uh, I would now like to go on to um, uh, follow this with uh, an address from the uh, ITU, the International Telecommunications uh, Union, of which uh, our colleague Hani Eskadar is going to speak on behalf of the Secretary uh, General. I think there were a few connection issues, but I hope they've been now uh, addressed. Uh, Hani, are you there? Um, Alexi, I know you were trying to get a hold of uh, Hanny's connection and sorting that out. Uh, is there any update on that? Otherwise, we'll come back. Yeah, we understand that it might require some minutes. So if you if you could get back to that a bit later, we will fix that. Yes, I can. Um, but we do have a video address um, from Hans Kluger, the regional director for the WHO European region. Is that available to play just now? Your Excellencies, colleagues and friends, the UN Interagency Task Force on the Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases informs and complements the European Program of Work 2020-2025. Today, cardiovascular disease, cancer, chronic respiratory disease and diabetes remain the most common causes of death and disability across the WHO European region accounting for 90% of deaths and 85% of 
of disability adjusted life years. These deaths and disability are avoidable at the time to achieve the NCD related SDG targets is growing short. We are just 100 weeks away from the UN high level meeting in 2025, 100 weeks. Now we must focus our efforts on the areas of greatest burden and raise the profile of NCDs on political and health agendas. For this reason, I have established the special initiative on non communicable diseases and innovation. This initiative is now reviewing NCD best buys to identify and deliver a package of quick buys, interventions that can make an impact in countries within two to seven years. Applying these requires working in partnership and leveraging our strengths for effective multi-sectoral action. The task force is a valuable mechanism for fostering this collaboration. WHO Europe seeks to harness the significant advances in digital health applications and practices across the region to tackle NCDs, improve healthcare and accelerate progress towards universal health coverage. For example, we have launched an artificial intelligence tool to help countries oversee and regulate the promotion of harmful products that are mainly targeted at children. But we must strengthen the monitoring and evaluation of digital health programs and interventions to unlock their potential and ensure the benefits are enjoyed by all. We look forward to partnering with the task force and international telecommunication union to ensure a balanced health sector digital transformation across the region. Today, we have the tools and the know-how to prevent and control NCDs, but the clock is ticking. Our shared challenge is to prioritize quick buys for maximum impact over the next 100 weeks. Good luck. Thank you very much indeed, um, uh, Hans, for uh, for that for that intervention uh, and highlighting the alignment between the work of the task force and the work of the European um, region. Uh, let's um, uh, we're still waiting. I understand for um, uh, Hanny's link to become live. Uh, we had hoped to have. Um, uh, uh, the, the Honourable uh, Afora Atta from uh, uh, Ghana, the Ministry of Finance, with us. Um, but I think he's also having difficulty in connecting. Um, Honourable Minister, you're not there at the moment, are you? So once again, we'll make sure that his intervention is available to uh, to colleagues as well. Um, are we now sorted with 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 Hanny? If not, I'm going to go on uh, and invite some of our other speakers. Okay, so um, I'm delighted to um, welcome back to speak to us, um, uh, Professor Jeremy Lauer, who used to work with WHO and now um, holds a, a, a chair um, at the uh, Strathclyde University and is uh, the founder of Unexia. Uh, Jeremy, you spoke to us last year about Unexia's commitment to innovative financing for the Health for Life Fund and for global health more broadly. Uh, and it's great to have you um, back to give us an update on where things uh, stand. So, Jeremy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I warmly congratulate the Government of Scotland and its First Minister, Mr. Hamza Youssef, for their historic, unprecedented contribution to solving the funding crisis for non-communicable disease. I also congratulate the Scottish First Minister for his bold decision to speak words of truth at Climate Week. As the First Minister appreciates the climate crisis and the crisis in chronic disease are linked through the burning of fossil fuels. However, fossil fuels are only one commercial determinant of disease, unhealthy foods, alcohol and tobacco are also facilitated by a powerful industrial coalition 
as myself, a resident of Glasgow, where I am, in addition to the role in which you see me here today, a professor at Strathclyde University, I see too clearly how Scotland is caught in the grip of multiple commercially determined pandemics. Last year, when I spoke in this forum, I beseeched governments of the world to lean into proven solutions for the largest cause of premature death and human suffering, namely chronic disease. You must neither abdicate your duty to act, nor allow actors who profit to capture your policies and priorities. Last year, too, I said that Unexia, a coordination and financing platform that will fill the void left by market and government failure, pledged an initial commitment of up to $50 million to the multi-partner trust fund Health for Life. Unexia is a digital platform utilizing decentralized finance and decentralized governance to transform global health. While we focus on the negative side effects of digital platforms, such as Facebook or Twitter, mechanism design for social good remains unexploited. I'm not naive about the negative impact of such current platforms designed again for commercial purposes, but I'm confident that digital solutions to solve government and market failure are an innovation the world needs now. Imagine bringing the power of pooled procurement for NCD drugs to governments philanthropists, the private sector, NGOs, and the people of the world through a digital platform such as Uber or Airbnb. Imagine likewise alleviating pain points that current funders confront with the use of an autonomous and intelligent platform. Imagine incentivizing new funders, allowing users and beneficiaries to capture tri the trillions of dollars of value currently lost every year. You don't have to imagine any longer. This will soon be a reality. That so be it, Unexia's pledge and that of Scotland, moreover, are a fraction of what's required. More money, but fundamentally, the better use of the money we have. Global health financing for chronic disease averages only $1 billion per year, most provided in lots of less than $1 million by an array of actors not adhering to any coherent agenda. Nonetheless, the first investors in Unexia are standing by, ready to provide their first infusions in the seven figures with an initial platform valuation in the eight figures. In a brief span, Unexia will become, as the Global Fund did a mere four years after its launch, a $1 billion platform. Non-communicable disease prevention and control has some of the best policies, plans, and proposals in the world. But what good are they sitting on the shelf. Thank you again, Scotland, for leading the way to a future in which proven remedies will be implemented and will deliver impact worldwide. Thank you. Jeremy, thanks a lot for coming back and uh, addressing us again and uh, um, for your boundless enthusiasm. Um, uh, and desire to uh, support financing for uh, global health and NCDs. Thank you very much. Now, I understand that we do have um, uh, Hani uh, Eskadar uh, back. 
Hannah, you will remember, is from the International Telecommunications Union. We heard earlier from UN Habitat. ITU is an, another important uh, uh, task force member. Um, and um, he's speaking on behalf of the Secretary General, who at the last minute was not able to be here. Um, Hanny, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Nick, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are indeed at ITU very glad and honored to be part of the NTD task force since many years now, and we definitely commit to continue our engagement and support uh, to the task force since we are more and more recognizing that while the COVID pandemic is receding, the global non-communicable disease epidemic remains, and uh, this is really hindering the overall progress to uh, achieve the SDGs and really affecting people's well-being. Uh, as we've been engaged with WHO and others on, um, on digital services for health for many years, we really see that uh, there is a new proliferation and uh, a rising trend of new innovations that are coming to the market, uh, which opens up a vital opportunity to harness those digital tools to combat NCDs. Um, and we, at the same time, see also increasing demand for digital health solutions from countries, which really puts um, the demand on our shoulders as international agencies to see how we can extend access and enhance the availability and quality of anti-digital solutions uh, available for millions worldwide. Uh, recognizing this potential, we also acknowledge that if the digital technologies are appropriately used, uh, this can really bridge the gap in accessing essential healthcare services, and particularly in remote areas, improving care quality and empower patients. Um, however, we understand at the same time that there are some still challenges and gaps when it comes to the scaling up and deployment of digital services. Um, several gaps still remain in terms of, um, you know, uh, connectivity, how we bring connectivity to the last mile, uh, how we bring connectivity to, uh, you know, uh, places uh, um, that are very remote. Uh, and this will require high uh, commitment from stakeholders and really a lot of collaboration. We still see all other types of challenges as well that are still remaining in terms of security, interoperability, human capacity, governance, et cetera. And in that context, um, ITU um, is very committed to continue to collaborate with WHO and others uh, to um, you know, uh, address and help countries to address those types of gaps and to really promote evidence-based digital solutions for NCD and uh, to advance universal health coverage. In that sense, um, as part uh, uh, of the task force and as a member of the task force, We've been working recently with WHO in developing um, a digital health business case for NCD, uh, which I think will probably uh, offer a lot of insights on how we can create the case for business, uh, create the case for digital health, and we can uh, how we can offer cost benefit analysis for countries to implement selected digital health interventions in their own context. We believe that this business case will serve as a critical advocacy tool to mobilize resources and really raise the awareness of the potential of digital health and how this could be uh, possibly compete with other types of uh, urgent needs that the health sector is, um, is, uh, is facing and might also increase the political commitment to in implement digital health services for NCD prevention and control. Uh, we also believe that um, um, the impact of this kind of uh, uh, proven business case for digital health can also be uh, developed further uh, and countries can do their own type of um, you know, uh, exercises to kind of understand uh, what does it mean and what kind of uh, uh, cost benefit analysis that they can um, you know, read from uh, digital health solutions. Uh, we've been also very much glad to collaborate also on um, identification of digital, digital health solutions and initiatives that are relevant, safe, effective, and scalable. Uh, we've been delighted to contribute to the 2023 Task Force Awards, uh, which we understand will be announced uh, during the, uh, the meeting, which recognize digital health initiatives in countries in the state in high levels of relevant impact and maturity. So, 
all that, we hope that this significant work that we accomplished uh, during the last few years will contribute to the adoption of appropriate evidence-based digital health solutions, but also increase access to prevention and um, uh, other types of related MTB services in those in need. So we look forward in continuing our collaboration with WHO and others, um, and uh, we will continue to be involved in the task force uh, to support government in delivering digitally delivered MTB services for their population. I think. Thank you, um, Hani, for your uh, remarks, and please also thank uh, um, uh, uh, your Secretary General as well. Um, uh, thank you very much. Now, we did hear from um, uh, Jeremy Lauer a short while ago, um, and that was the start of three interventions from um, uh, partners um, beyond the, the UN system development partners. Um, and we know from the Economic and Social Council how important uh, they view the task force in reaching out and working with partners of different sorts. Um, and so it's great that we've got three uh, non-state actors here. You heard from Jeremy. I'm now pleased to pass the floor to uh, Rav, uh, Ravi Batnagar, the Director of External Affairs and Partnerships in the Reckitt Foundation. Um, uh, Ravi, the floor is yours. Welcome. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, I feel real uh, privileged to be there as a part of this task force for the second year now. And thanks, Alexi, for having me here. Uh, I would love to start with congratulating the task force for completing the 10 years of uh, 10th anniversary of the task force. Uh, we are committed uh, to work on the task force, in particularly when it comes to digital health. Uh, I was also hearing uh, our uh, Honorable Health Minister of India and Dr. Tedros. We have been working with the Ministry of Health, Government of India, very closely and taking, uh, you know, uh, we have the biggest uh, health and hygiene campaign in India uh, and across the world, uh, which has completed 640 hours plus live broadcasting on the health issues. We pledge to take the issues on the NCDs and the mental health also uh, on, on the national broadcast, what we do every year. On the occasion of uh, 2nd of October, which happens to be Mahatma Gandhi's birth, uh, death anniversary. And in particular, what is required to scale up of the digital health solutions of, for the NCDs and mental health, we are very much willing to support development, dissemination of the digital services through the delivery platform to prevent and control the NCDs. Uh, last but not the least from our side, there are a lot of the global best practices which this task force has. We would also love to replicate some of those global health, uh, best practices or the good practices in the big countries like India, uh, uh, in, in, in the South Asia region, uh, which I lead for the record. And uh, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed, um, uh, Ravi. Um, now, um, I, it's my pleasure to uh, ask Connie uh, Muto um, who to, uh, to speak. Um, Connie, you're the immediate past president of Soroptimus International uh, African Federation. Um, and we heard very briefly from um, uh, Alexi about uh, your involvement uh, in the Health for Life Fund. So Connie, delighted to have you here today. Thank you, thank you, Nicholas. Uh, as you have said, my name is Kwani Mutunu. I've, I'm the immediate past president of uh, the Africa Federation of Soropmis International. Uh, you may know that Soropmis International is a global movement for professional and business women who volunteer their time, their resources, and their energy to transform women and girls across the world through education, uh, empowerment, and enabling opportunities. So Soropnis International Africa Federation is proud to partner with the United Nations Health for Life Fund. Uh, and in line with our mandate, we are going to advocate for women's and girls' rights a need for cancer prevention and treatment. As you know, the Sub-Saharan Africa is the most hit. We are going to mobilize resources and pull funding with others um, uh, for collective action. 
and will also deliver countrywide awareness, which I think has already started raising activities across our communities. Every single day, uh, as you know, more than 300 women in Africa hear the words, you've got cervical cancer. And for some, it's the end of the world. There is no hope. And yet we can do something. That's why we are partnering with Health for Life Fund. The WHO has launched this global strategy to accelerate the elimination of cervical cancer uh, with their three ambitious uh, goals, targets by 2030. And we want to be part of them. 2030, by 2030, uh, uh, vaccinate 90% of the adolescent girls against HPV, 70% uh, of women must be screened and 90% of women uh, presenting a lesion or, or, or invasive case must be treated. They must be treated by 2030. So what are we saying? We are saying that to achieve this very ambitious uh, 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 targets, we need a serious political commitment. We in, in, it need increased funding and multi-stakeholder uh, multi, uh, collaboration and community engagement. Soropnis are ready to do that. Today, I'm proud to stand before you representing all the Soropnis to commit our organization that we are going to walk in lockstep with the United Nations and with countries and other local partners that may want to join us in yeah. Africa, across Africa, to do this action. As women, we must uh, make the invisible disease visible so that it can be wiped out. Together, we will save lives, we will reduce suffering. We are going to empower the women and girls in Africa and I urge you to join us in doing this. I thank you for inviting us today. Thank you very much, uh, Connie, for your support. Thank you for being with us today and for the um, leadership being shown by the Sir Optimist International uh, Africa Federation. Thank you. You're so um, uh, I still don't, unfortunately, see uh, our Minister of Finance from Ghana uh, able to join us. Uh, and given that, um, I'm going to pass back now uh, to Svetlana uh, as we move on to the 2023 Task Force Awards. Svetlana. Thank you so much. And uh, really, I'm very excited by this announcement, which was done quite a couple of minutes ago from the support of the Scotland uh, to provide financing to the Health for Life Trust Fund. So it's a great pleasure to have these first leaders on uh, Health for Life Fund and we are highly appreciate this decision of the government. And of course, we are highly appreciate the, uh, the core sponsor of our meeting today, the government of India, who is supporting us on this very important meeting, the 10 year of uh, uh, UN Interagency Task Force. I think it's a very, a very important point that we've got this financial support to contribute on the um, beating the NCDs. And thank you very much for all colleagues who were able to join us and who was trying to join us uh, this uh, virtual format sometimes is very visible. We have more than 100 uh, participants who are joining us, more than 150 now. And uh, But uh, unfortunately, the connection is sometimes is not very good and we uh, lost uh, and didn't have the chance to connect with other participants who are uh, with us today. But hope that later we can get their inputs. But now we are going to the most important and very sweet part of our meeting today, the award ceremony. So let me show you, I hope you can see, this is the award that will be uh, very quickly announced to the winners. And it's my great pleasure to invite our colleague from uh, WHO PAHO, 
uh, uh, who is representing the regional director of PAHO, uh, Dr. Barbosa. Today with us is Dr. Marcus Espinal, assistant director of WHO PAHO, who will announce the winners. And let me explain why we decided and invited, and uh, today the PAHO region is invited to announce the awards because most of the winners uh, are coming from Americas. And it's really a great pleasure to welcome our colleague, uh, my colleague, Dr. Marcos, who is joining us from the New York uh, to announce the list of the winners. As I said previously, the award itself and also the letter from the Director General will be sent shortly to you and you will get it. So over to you, uh, Marcus. Thank you, Ms. Vilatana and Nick. Good to see you, Nick. Um, a long time. Uh, can you hear me correct? Thank you. Um, on behalf of Dr. Barbosa, who unfortunately cannot join today as he's engaged in several meetings at, in New York at the UN, it gives me great pleasure to join this event and celebrate with you the 10th anniversary of the UN Interagency Task Force on the Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases. As you all heard, the task force has provided so much support to a number of countries in the world, but also in this region on non-communicable diseases and tobacco control. In this region, to mention a few, Barbados, Colombia, El Salvador, Jamaica, and Paraguay. Um, and we expect that more countries will uh, be continuing supporting. And we expect to continue this fruitful collaboration in the new areas that the task force is focusing on, including mental health, road safety, air pollution, digital health, physical activity, assistive technologies, and others. The 2023 Task Force Awards for Multisectoral Action on NCDs and Mental Health is arranged in partnership with the WHO Department of Digital Health and the International Telecommunication Union. This year's Task Force Awards recognize, in particular, the use of digital health interventions with proven results for the prevention and control of NCDs, mental health conditions, or NCD-related SDGs. And it gives me a pleasure to see some champions from the Americas who has won this prestigious award this year. We at WHO and PAHO embrace innovations. And with that, the digital health program that aims to revolutionize, revolutionize models of care harnessing the power of technology to transform the way healthcare is delivered, making it more accessible, efficient, and patient-centered. We aim to strengthen information systems in the health sector across the entire world, but also across the Americas. Actively implement electronic health records, decision support systems and platforms, including telehealth, mobile health applications, and artificial intelligence solutions that empower individuals to actively engage in their health management, track their well being, and receive personalized health information and reminders. Now, let us move to announcing the awards. This year, we have nine winners. Awards are being made in three categories Ministry of Health and Government Health Agencies, Ministries and Government Agencies Outside Health and non-governmental organizations, academia and, fund academia and foundations. First, winners in the category of Ministry of Health or government agency under the Ministry of Health. We have four winners. The Ministry of Health of the Dominican Republic for the successful implementation of the Take Care of Your Mental Health Initiative, providing psychological first aid and spaces for prevention and education in mental health in a tele-assisted mode. Congratulations to the Ministry of Health of the Dominican Republic. The Ministry of Health Nicaragua 
for their outstanding contribution to the prevention and control of NCDs using a digital health strategy that has been made available across all public health centers in the country. The Ministry of Health Lebanon, in recognition of their nationwide exemplar program, a step-by-step, -step, a digital WHO guide self-help intervention for the depression that is an evidence-based and free mental health service using digital technology. And finally, the Ministry of Health, Oman, for their continuous efforts and commitment to multi-sectoral action for the prevention and control of NCDs by implementing plain packaging for tobacco products on a national level. Congratulations to all the, the uh, winners in the first category of Ministries of Health. Now, let me go to the category of ministries and government agencies outside health. And there we have two winners. Ministry of Public Education, Department of Health and Environment, Costa Rica, for the promotion of mental health and well being in the educational community in Costa Rica initiative that uses digital technology and is working towards the national implementation of an adaptation of the mental health literacy curriculum developed in Canada. The Ministry of Youth and Sports, Tunisia, for the promotion of physical activity as a multi-sectoral approach to prevent and control NCDs by targeting the risk factor of physical inactivity. Congratulations to the two countries for excellent job. Finally, or last but not least, in the category of non-governmental organizations, academia and foundations, we have three winners. Health Finance Institute, the United States of America, for supporting investment in NCD initiative through evidence-based financing mechanisms and using health economics model, models for innovative NCD advocacy. LUNO CS Shet Republic for facing health literacy using digital tools and saving lives through preventive care activities for NCDs and mental health conditions in schools and hospitals. And the Forum for Protection of Consumer Rights in Nepal for enforcing bans on alcohol advertisements in media and public areas in Nepal to prevent and control NCDs and mental health conditions. Congratulations to all those awardees today. We look forward to hearing on your months ahead, on your progress in the month ahead. And uh, hopefully these awards will encourage great, even greater action both by those awarded today and others in responding to the challenge of the NCD related SDG. Thank you very much. Back to us, Vilslana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you, Marcos. Okay, Nick, over to you. No, I just apologies. want to congratulate the winners and uh, thank you very much for our colleague, uh, Dr. Marcos Espinal, for announcing this important list of winners. Over to you, Nick, to facilitate our uh, uh, discussion later. Okay. Thanks. Thank, okay. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Svetlana, and congratulations from me um, as well. Um, this year we have found a bit of time for those that have won awards to make a brief um, one minute intervention. Please do keep it to this colleagues so that we can finish uh, on time. Uh, but it's great to be able to hear from, uh, from, from the winners. So let's start off then with colleagues uh, from the Ministry of Health. I think we've got Oman on the line and we've got to Dr. Abdullah al Hathi. Is that correct? Yes, Nick, that's correct. <clears throat> Congratulations, yeah. over to you. Thank you. Dear colleagues, it gives me a great pleasure to receive the UNNCD Task Force Award on behalf of the Minister of Health of Oman, who unfortunately could not be with us today due to prior commitments. Although Oman is a relatively low tobacco use prevalence country according to the WHO database, we view this risk factor as a significant public health threat that requires sustained attention to reduce its consumption. Most recently, 
Oman opted for, to implement clean packaging of all tobacco products sold with the aim of stripping the tobacco industry of its latest, <clears throat> sorry, of its last platform to advertise their lethal products. No doubt this award will motivate us to further improve the implementation of voluntary NCD target, as well as target of 3A sustainable development goals by strengthening the implementation of the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Thank you again. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we'll now move on to uh, the Honorable Minister for Health in the Dominican Republic, Dr. Daniel Rivera. Welcome. Muy buenos días. Gracias por la invitación y agradecimiento por esta participación. Quiero expresar nuestro profundo agradecimiento por este reconocimiento a la iniciativa del Centro de Contacto Cuida tu Salud Mental, desarrollada con el objetivo de ofrecer a la población dominicana un centro de asistencia telefónica gratuita de primera ayuda y más después del efecto de COVID-19. Este proyecto surge a partir de un pensamiento de la excelentísima señora primera dama Raquel Albaje, motivada para promover una red integral de servicios de salud mental, la cual además incluye el fortalecimiento de las unidades de intervención en crisis, la reeducación del Centro de Rehabilitación Psicosocial, el Centro de Rehabilitación Psicosocial y Desarrollo Humano reside y por disposición del excelentísimo señor presidente, Luis Abinader, se creará el Centro Especializado en Prevención y Rehabilitación de Adicciones, CEPRA. Consciente de que la salud mental constituye una cuestión urgente, no solo para la salud pública, sino también para el desarrollo económico y bienestar social. Buscamos, a través de esta red y esta línea, de brindar el servicio de asistencia psicológica a todo el país, y todo el tiempo disponible con actualmente 38 psicólogos permanentes, con la finalidad de potencializar el acceso a los servicios de salud mental y promover la prevención y educación para todos. En la lucha contra enfermedades no transmisibles, nuestro país continúa también desarrollando estrategias como la Ruta de la Salud, Cambia tu Estilo de Vida, una intervención social desarrollada como respuesta a los resultados obtenidos en nuestras investigaciones poblacionales sobre hipertensión arterial, diabetes y obesidad que están a los mismos niveles que los países desarrollados. Y otros problemas también nutricionales son enfocados con el fin de garantizar un enfoque integral para promover estilos de vida saludables. A la fecha llevamos 29 intervenciones en distintas provincias de todo el país que han beneficiado a millones de personas, brindando más de 38 servicios de salud, acercando la salud a la gente. Después del COVID hemos visto que el 30% de la población quiere que lo busquen y eso hace la Ruta de la Salud. Reafirmamos nuestro compromiso con la prevención y el control de las enfermedades no transmisibles y el fortalecimiento de las estrategias para promover la salud mental. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Minister. Let's move on to the, uh, the, the next winner. Uh, and delighted to have the uh, Minister for uh, the Youth and Sports um, uh, Ministry in Tunisia, Mr. Kamal Degouish. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Kamil Digis, I'm uh, the Tunisian uh, Minister of Youth and uh, Sport in Tunisia. We, on the behalf of the Tunisian government and on the behalf of uh, uh, the Tunisian people, we thank you uh, for this uh, award and we promise you to continue to promote this kind of action as we've done in the past with the collaboration of the Tunisian section of the World Health Organization. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, sir. Um, let's move straight on to the Ministry of Health of Costa Rica. Uh, do we have uh, the Ministry of Costa Rica represented here, please? 
Sí, señor. Casi no se ve porque se hay mucha, mucha luz, pero sí de parte del Ministerio de Educación Pública y en este caso de mi persona, Tatiana Cartín, jefa del Departamento de Salud y Ambiente, sumamente agradecida y bendecida por el acompañamiento que nos ha hecho OPS en todo este trabajo, principalmente de salud mental. Estamos capacitando así a todo el ministerio de punta a punta en Costa Rica con profesionales que saben la importancia de trabajar el tema de prevención de situaciones conflictivas, ¿verdad? Y además de eso, el, el, lo que es la promoción y el acompañamiento en todo lo que implica la salud mental. Eh, de parte de nuestro país, como les digo, muy agradecida por el acompañamiento que nos ha dado la OPS en este gran trabajo con el país de Canadá principalmente y aquí en Costa Rica con el Ministerio de Salud y la Caja de el Seguro Social y obviamente la regional de la OPS para llegar a todos, ya les dije, los profesionales que desde el Ministerio de Educación están haciendo incidencia en cada una de las provincias. De hecho, eh, en dos semanas terminamos el curso que se implementa para la réplica en el 2024 para todo el país y eso nos tiene muy motivados porque esto va a llegar a cada uno de los centros educativos. Así que mil bendiciones y sumamente agradecida por este reconocimiento. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, let's take uh, now uh, an intervention from one of our non-state actor winners, uh, Health Financing Institute. Welcome to Andrew Figel. Uh, Andrew, you're on, you're on mute. Sorry Thanks. about that. Um, dear UN and the Agency Task Force, Madam Chair, I'm very honored indeed to accept this award from the UN and the Agency Task Force. I don't know about this, but I can't hear you. The volume isn't um, is, is not high. Can you uh, see if you can amend that? Um, can you hear me now? Perfect. Yep. Yes, we hear you, Andrew. Okay, very sorry about that. So, dear UN and the Agency Task Force for NCDs, Madam Chair, I am extremely honored to accept this award from the Task Force for NCDs, and I'm very grateful to our supporters and my team for their tireless efforts, without whom HFI would just be an idea. When we started the Health Finance Institute in 2019, our first project was supporting the task force with the multi-partner trust fund, the Data Health for Life Fund, concept note, and we're very pleased that it has since progressed and also been announced to uh, receive an additional round of funding from Scotland today. Since then, the HFI has advocated for greater investments in NCDs, prevention, treatment and education in more than 10 countries. Today, we're supporting children with type 1 diabetes in Mexico with life-saving devices and have collaborated with the Danish Red Cross, Family Health International, the WHO, UN ECOSOC, UN Ops, among others, to change lives. Despite its impact, NCD work remains chronically underfunded. Until that changes, we have our work cut out for us. This wonderful recognition is the necessary wind beneath our wings. And thank you again. Thank you very much, Andrea, and uh, congratulations again. Uh, do we have a representative from the Ministry of Health in Nicaragua? We don't. Then, in which case, I'm going to ask um, for uh, Lono, that's Veronica, uh, to speak, please. Veronica Makova. Yes, uh, okay. thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is with profound gratitude that I accept this award. And the honor is not just mine, but it uh, belongs also to all my colleagues and team members of Luno who, like me, believe in the power of education in prevention of uh, non-communicable diseases. And uh, one of our greatest achievements so far is launching the Preventive Cap, as we call it, uh, which is mobile application which reminds people of uh, their preventive checkups and their other doctor's appoint appointments and also educates them on um, how to do or perform self-examination of the breasts, testicles and skin. Uh, and besides that, uh, we also educate uh, thousands of people every year in our interactive prevention workshops. In nine years we, of our existence, we have already educated more than 140,000 people, uh, but we don't stop. Uh, there is still so much work to be done in increasing the health literacy in Czechia. 
And so thank you very much for this amazing recognition. It motivates us and inspires us to continue our work with even greater passion and dedication. So thank you very much. Thank you, Veronica, and congratulations again. Um, do we have anyone from the Ministry of Health of Lebanon? We don't. OK, then the floor uh, now um, goes to the Forum for Protection of Consumer Rights. And Jyoti Banya, welcome and congratulations. I can see you're there. Thank you, Nick. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and delegate, distinguished delegates. I'm so happy today. Um, our whole, whole family is here, Capetian family is here, and our partner also here. Uh, we are highly grateful for this award. FACRN has been dedicated uh, to working the consumer right and uh, public health area from the uh, last 29 years. Public health, uh, Nepal has the deep rooted problem of the NCT due to region of uh, tobacco and alcohol. We along with the Nepal government, WHO Nepal and other stakeholders have been working actively uh, to control and regulate tobacco and alcohol. During these avenues, on 2014, we had great note of award from WHO. We are continuously working with federal, province, and local government to mitigate alcohol control, advertising, promotion, and raise the taxation for alcohol. Supreme Court has been taken these issues of public uh, interest litigation and have issued the different order to government. Nepal government has also taken these issues seriously but there is much more work uh, to do is in this area. Lastly, we assure you all this, we are eager, eager to work further on the issues of the alcohol and tobacco control in line with safer initiative and FTC convention. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Zia. Thank you very much indeed um, for, for, for that last intervention. As far as I'm aware, we don't have any other award winners that need to intervene. If that's the case, then um, I would like to pass over to Alan Labrique, who's the WHO Director for Health Innovation, who's going to provide a, a, a short summary of what we've heard so far. And I think it's particularly pertinent, Alan, that you're doing this, not only because you were um, uh, a partner in this year's Task Force Awards that was highlighting the importance of digital technology, but also because uh, of uh, the importance that ECOSOC uh, highlights with regards to um, uh, uh, digital uh, technologies and health innovations uh, and the work that we're doing together. So um, over to you, welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Nicola. Let me adjust my audio here so it's no uh, echo, but it's, it's really delightful to be here. I'm joining you from the UN General Assembly in New York, and uh, it's just been a, a fantastic celebration today of all of this, this fantastic work. So distinguished guests, colleagues and friends of digital health and, and transformation of how we do uh, global health. Uh, it's really my pleasure to join you at this event. This week marks the 10 year anniversary of the UN Interagency Ta Task Force, and also uh, serendipitously my one year anniversary serving at WHO as the director of this new Department of Digital Health and Innovation, which demonstrates the commitment of WHO to leverage every tool at our disposal to accelerate progress of global health goals. This is the theme of the uh, this week at the UN General Assembly, and it has been the mission of this task specific task force. It's been a privilege to serve with you all uh, such an outstanding, dynamic, uh, action-oriented global community. The collaboration with partners across public and private sector with fellow UN agencies like IT who has been nothing short of exemplary. Having said this, I want to begin with uh, congratulating the finalists and the winners of the 2023 uh, Task Force and uh, WHO ITU Awards on Digital Health for their great ideas, demonstrating the power of, of lateral thinking and leveraging uh, digital health to accelerate the prevention and management of NCDs. 
we just heard from Nepal and from Czechia, and it's just been delightful to hear so many hardworking innovators, implementers, and creative problem solvers across these many sectors. One of you said this this award gave you the wind beneath your, your wings to, to continue, but I will say that it's your work that gives us the, the, the wind beneath our wings to continue uh, supporting all of you and our member states. The convergence here today has given us an opportunity to take stock of the progress on meeting the NCD and mental health related uh, sustainable development goals and to identify further actions that are required. As many speakers have pointed out, <clears throat> the combat against NCDs remain neglected and underfunded, despite their prominent contribution to preventable deaths globally. NCDs such as cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, chronic respiratory diseases, as we all know, are the leading cause of death worldwide, accounting for more than 70% of all deaths globally in 2019, more so today. It's astonishing that every two seconds, one person under the age of 70 dies from an NCD. And those who are living with these conditions are at the greatest risk of premature death. These statistics, in fact, highlight the critical role, as each of you today has recognized, that digital health technology can offer to support the numerous challenges in addressing NCDs, whether these are related to uh, limited access to healthcare services and other social determinants of health, like poverty, inequality, and gender-based discrimination. Preliminary results from the NCD-focused uh, digital health business case being developed by the task force shows that investing an equivalent of 0.01%, I'll say that again, 0.01% of current health expenditure in low and middle income countries in three types of digital health interventions, telemedicine, mobile messaging, and chatbots would save more than 800,000 lives and convert over $100 billion in economic losses in the next years. This business case is a great step towards understanding some of the costs and benefits in investing in digital health and will allow countries to develop their own advocacy tools to scale up the use of digital health solutions. I join my many colleagues in recognizing and thanking the government of Scotland for its generous contribution to the Health for Life Fund and all of the others who already have provided support to the work of the task force. Digital health is one of the most powerful tools that LMICs can use to address the growing burden of NCDs and to achieve universal health coverage. In today's digital era, we cannot speak of health for all without digital health for all. However, to make digital transformation a success, all countries need to have continued investment to build foundational infrastructure, policy, legislation, and enterprise architecture, which allow us to identify and scale solutions sustainably. We also need local capacity to maintain and adapt these solutions as needs change. We've heard today from several digital health leaders, such as the Kyrgyz Republic, speak to the role of strong national governance in setting a vision, a roadmap, and promoting cross-sectoral collaboration to move from our analog reality of the past to a digital one of the future. As we collectively reflect on what the pandemic has taught us, I encourage us all to recognize the importance of innovation that is responsive to needs and put people at the center, but also to consider the role of investment, again, in those building blocks of policy, legislation, and governance. These are the roads and vehicles, uh, the roads and highways on which the vehicles of innovation run. And without these, the individual vehicles that we've talked about today cannot reach their destinations effectively or survive beyond the tenure of their initial funding. To do this sustainably, governments, NGOs, and the private sector must collaborate. WHO is committed to digital health as a key enabler to accelerate the SDGs on which we have fallen behind as a global community. Endorsed by member states in 2020, the Global Strategy on Digital Health 2020 to 2025 
puts countries in the driver's seat of their national digital health transformation. I'm thrilled to inform all of you about the newly launched Global Initiative on Digital Health, which is a WHO managed network of networks, which will serve as a vehicle to accelerate the achievements of the global strategy on digital health and support countries and partners to amplify resources and to align efforts to achieve national digital health transformation sustainably. What we would like to do is to have all of the excellent work presented today be amplified globally so that countries everywhere can have access to the innovations that can be scaled and sustained around the world. The support to develop local capacity is an area very relevant to behavior change tools, which are important in the prevention and management of NCDs. The Be Healthy, Be Mobile initiative of the WHO in collaboration with ITU has played an important role in this area. And we wanna take this opportunity to thank the NCD task force for their support to the initiative over the past years. Once again, congratulations, and we look forward to the exciting road ahead as we see your projects continue to mature and unfold. Beyond the hype and shiny objects that, that often comes with the space of digital health, we all know, those of you in the room, that digital health improves and saves lives. When we think about the broader person and we think beyond the individual problem or disease. I look forward to leveraging all of our tools and resources to make this vision happen together. Nick, over to you. Thank you so much indeed, um, Alan, for those inspiring words. Um, 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 I am um, now going to pass back to Svetlana and Geneva colleagues. They will double check that I haven't missed anybody out and that there isn't somebody who still wants to uh, speak. Um, but assuming not, um, Svetlana, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nico. We are checking that uh, CDC Africa is available and will uh, be joining us shortly. Uh, may I ask the representative from the CDC Africa to take the floor before I will say the closing remarks. And thanks, uh, Alan, for your kind words and uh, good luck in your schedule in New York events. CDC Africa, are you available, please? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much for allowing me to speak uh, during this uh, excellent um, high-level meeting. Let me first uh, start by apologizing on behalf of the Africa, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Jean Cassia, the Director General of uh, Africa CTC, who could not uh, be able to join. And uh, he asked me to really uh, congratulate the UN Intelligence Task Force for this uh, excellent uh, progress over the 10 years, and also congratulate the um uh, the, the 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 organization that just received the the UN uh, intelligence task force uh, uh, award for the excellent innovation in uh, um ensuring access to uh, services to prevent and manage non communicable diseases and uh, and uh, 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 promote mental health so i will just um uh, briefly talk about africa cdc commitment to uh, prevention and control of ncd and uh, a promotion of uh, of mental health. Um, uh, you all know that Africa CDC was established in uh, January 2017 uh, uh, after the uh, Ebola outbreak in West Africa. And at that time, the focus was to support country to respond to outbreak. But in uh, September 2020, uh, right in the middle of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, Africa CDC established a division of disease control and prevention uh, with the um, mandate to uh, really uh, support country to uh, 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 strengthen he the health system to combat uh, both communicable and non-communicable uh, diseases. And uh, in um, the first priority for the division was to, is to um, uh, develop a, a strategic priority for, for, for NCDs, uh, injuries and mental health that was launched last year in April uh, 2022. So now we are really glad to um, recognize the collaboration and partnership we're having with WHO uh, UNDP, uh, UN Intelligence Task Force uh, to build capacity of uh, member states in different um, areas such as uh, developing the workforce for non-communicable disease, injuries, and mental health. Um, 
uh, supporting uh, a country to enhance the uh, surveillance system for NCD injuries and mental health. Uh, 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 advocate for local manufacturing and access to uh, vital um, um, health product for uh, for non communicable uh, injuries and, and mental health, and promote innovation and cross country learning in NCD prevention and control uh, through the member state uh, peer to peer uh, learning and, uh, and 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 support, and um, in conclusion, uh, uh, allow me to uh, also communicate that. Uh, working together through respected and action oriented partnership is an integral part of Africa CDC a success story. Health Africa CDC is committed to continue collaborating with uh, partners, including UN organizations, to deliver on this important work. Thank you so much, and uh, congratulations to everybody for this great milestone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us in the last minute. Highly appreciate uh, your kind words. And uh, let me go to our uh, final session, the closing. Uh, and of course, uh, I would like to start with congratulating all the winners. It's really a fantastic uh, achievement and we are very uh, appreciate all your efforts that you are doing in your countries, in your regions. Uh, and uh, these awards is really a great uh, opportunity to continue working with you closely. So saying today, I am really uh, would like to thank the government of uh, India for co-sponsoring this effect uh, event. And uh, uh, we are really highly appreciate that it is the annual meeting of the friends of the task force. And saying this, I would like to thank all our friends, UN agencies who are joined us today, who joined us in our work. And uh, of course, the colleagues from the ITU, the colleagues from the uh, UN Habitat who uh, provided a very important issue, how we can manage our efforts together in the area of non-communicable diseases and mental health, especially in the urban health, how we can increase our capacity and education for different uh, stakeholders. And of course, thank you very much for all um, participants who and panelists who take the floor today. Thank you very much for supporting the work of the Global Entity Platform Department and especially the UN Interagency Task Force. Thank you very much for the Scotland for uh, this uh, effort to financially support the Health for Life Fund. We have a lot of work to do. And thank you very much for all our colleagues, non-state actors who were awarded today and who are uh, working with us for the more than 10 years as the life of the uh, UN Interagency Task Force. Saying this, I would like uh, to thank all our team who created this fantastic event, the UN Interagency Task Force, who is online and offline and with us here in the room, and also my colleagues from the Global Coordination Mechanism, the Secretariat, who is also the part of the Global NCD platform. Uh, we are working very closely, engaging non-state actors, uh, we engage in academia, we engage in the private sector, in all our efforts to contribute and to support the work of the World Health Organization in headquarters, in the regions, in the countries, to be the NCDs, to work in the different areas, cross-sectoral, not only uh, the health, but also you saw today the representatives from the uh, sport, from the youth, from the finance, who is the part of our work and we are doing it in the field of our work in the WHO. So thank you very much. Enjoy this evening, who are in the evening as we are now and uh, who are working in New York. Uh, have a good day. It is a very busy time. Good luck, Nick. And uh, thank you very much and uh, goodbye. See you soon.